Chapter 5 K E H L A N I S P O V Why do they call it hot wings when they only give us the drumlet? I frown at the pieces of meat and he chuckles. Question of the day. His mouth was coated with sauce and I tried hard not to start laughing. Even as a messy eater, he still looked cute. You have a little something. I inform him. Where? He questions and I grin. Everywhere. The tip of his ears are pink as he cutely wipes his mouth, revealing his pink cheeks. So Mr. Marcel, what do you want to be when you're older? I'm just going to run one of my father's business before I take over all of them. He shrugs and I'm completely shocked by his answer. He sounded so modest. How many is all? He bites the inside of his cheek not staring at me. Maybe. 16. I start choking on the meat. That's what she said. And he slides over the juice, looking at me worriedly. Talk about successful. I heave still in shock and when I settle down we both burst out laughing. You nearly died and you're still talking about my father's success. Well died is maybe an exaggeration but I'm impressed. Like really, he must be mighty rich. I state and Draco snorts. We have more money than we know what to do with. They always go to charity events. And the fact that my mom isn't really a spender unless it's food. I'm an only kid, and we don't really have much family makes it worse. He sighs, sipping his red drink and I smile. He's complaining about too much money. Others are complaining that they don't have money. What is this world? How about you? What's your family like? Not really as interesting as yours. I laugh nervously. I never knew my mom. As soon as I was born she told the nurse she didn't want me. Luckily my dad fell in love. His words, I have a sister, same goes for her since we were only 5 minutes apart, my dad's a lawyer and, that's it, I answer and he was frowning at me, I rub my hands nervously as he leans forward, rejected 4 times, from all people you thought would love you, this dampened my mood as I no longer crave to be around anyone, I clear my throat as he doesn't say anything, grabbing the empty plates I stand, are you ready? I squeak and he nods, standing also, I dump the garbage, and we walk out in silence, the street lights were already on as we headed to the vehicle, hey, let's take a short walk, he touches my arm and I nearly erupt in a fit of giggles, it's an awful habit, instead I roll my lips into my mouth and nod, he walks forward blowing out a breath, before shoving his hand into his front pockets, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. He speaks up. I was just surprised as to why someone would not want you. You're so beautiful. He turns to me. And I pull a bit of my short hair behind my ear. My neck burning up. Oh 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 thank you. I smile softly at him and he returns it. And Levi's just adia. I know. I interrupt and he shakes his head. I can't tell you I understand what you're going through because I've never been cheated on but I just thought you should know that it obviously wasn't you. You're beautiful and kind from what I see. Or maybe I judge too quickly but I've got to say those boys were fool. It's been a day and a half and this boy has already made me feel like I was something special. It irked me. It irked me because I felt like they were all the same. He looked genuine. His eyes twinkling as he stared at me and when the words settled I can't help the tears that fall onto my cheek. For the first time in these days I allow myself to admit my broken feelings and show a moment of weakness. In two days, Draco Marcel has put this retarded thought back in my head. Maybe you're good enough. Chapter 6 K-E-H-L-A-N-I-S P-O-V Where were you? Kailan attacks me as I enter my room. Whose vehicle was that? That's a very expensive vehicle. Do you have a sugar daddy I don't know about? Kailan calm down. I roll my eyes amused as I shut the door. Dad wasn't even that hectic. It's 6 o'clock. Spill the beans. Who was that? A friend Kailan. I place my bag on my bed. A friend. That brings you home when the street lights come on? Yes. What is wrong with you guys? I place my hands on my hips staring at her. She raises her eyebrow. 
flipping her long wavy hair. I sigh. Draco Marcella. She screams. Screams. Girls. Dad calls from downstairs. Are you talking about boys again? Did you see Josh today? 13-year-old Kylan asks and I grin as I pop the pimple on my forehead, staring at her through the mirror. He was hot, and his ripped jeans? We squeal in sync, loudly and the door burst open. We jump, turning our frantic eyes to the dark-skinned man that stood in front of us. What? What is it? He breathes heavily. Who's in the room? Are you girls okay? Did you see something? Speak to me girls. We look at each other before erupting in laughter. Dad, we're okay. We're just talking about boys. Worst mistake I ever made. We were grounded for a month with no gadgets, which were basically our lives. No dad. Kailan says quickly, we're all good. I giggle as she fews. Kahalani, you went out with the richest, sexiest. Most wanted boy in the town. She jumps on my bed and I frown at her. We didn't go out Kylan. I just came from a relationship. Levi is a douche. Draco however. I don't want another relationship. We're just friends. Why are you friends with another college student? How do you know so much about him? Girl please. Everyone knows about the CEO's son. She winks and I sigh. We are just friends Kylan. Sure. Sure. She winks again and I narrow my eyes at her. Anyway next week is our birthday. Dad's going on a trip you know what that means. Stay up until 12. I beamed. I can see it now. Watching cartoons till my eyeballs fall out. Kehlani we do that every boof. She deadpans. But now we won't have to turn off the TV hastily every time we hear a sound. I grinned and Kailan looked at me in disgust. Close your mouth hole you make us sound lame. I laugh at my adorable sister. Well, what does it mean? Parta. No. I immediately shoot down that idea. Oh come on Kehlani. We need to be like normal high schoolers. We've never thrown a party before. And who's going to pick up all the junk the next morning? I tilt my head and she frowns finally thinking about it. Let's not worry about it. Please sis. Please, she begs, grabbing my arms and I sigh, I don't care, I'm just going goings or stay in my room anyway, yay. I'm going to tell love it what, you heard me, Karania, you wanted a party, you got a party, don't push me, I narrow my eyes at her and she raises both palms, fine, fine, I'm going to my room, good night love, night sis, a tilde, a tilde. A tilde, dad. Everyone else has a mom where's mine? I ask, looking up at him innocently and his face twisted in a funny way. As she's not here kiddo, he ushers me towards the vehicle and I frown as I get in Kylan already seated next to me. As curious as I was, she's in heaven. Kylan asks, two pigtails laid out on her head and he starts the vehicle. No. I don't think she'll get there. He murmurs the last part but I don't understand what he means. Well at that time I didn't. Well then she's alive. Kailan beams suddenly. So where is she? I chime in and he sighs. Your mom. Your mom just isn't here. He answers again leaving us in confusion. It was only a few years later that I truly understood what he meant. We were never destined to be loved. Never destined to be good enough. A tilde, a tilde, a tilde. As soon as I reached the gates, I plucked out my earphones, gaping as I saw someone familiar. What was he doing here? I slowed my walk and he notices me, giving.